I'm Karen Bradley. And I'm Wendy Bowlesby. And together we are collaborating on a show that we would like you to support. My dad was a pilot. On June 8th, 2012, he took his plane out for a test drive of an engine. The plan was to fly, it was two hours out and then turn around and two hours back up towards Duluth. And so he, he flew up there and uh, never came back. Went off radar at about 3.30 in the afternoon and just disappeared. When there's a moment of crisis, there's this adrenaline and you, and that moment when you don't, when you're dealing with ambiguous loss, when you don't know what happened, you just sort of have to learn to live with that adrenaline because it never really drops. It just sort of stays there and you just have to live with it. So, and so, what I love about the way you talk about your father mm -hmm. is, I wish I'd known him. He was a painter? He was, and in fact, the last painting that he finished, that yeah. painting is of a location that is right where he went missing. If that was the last thing that he saw, I hope it was that beautiful. And he was also a musician. Not only was he a musician, but he had a brass quintet, mm -hmm. and you you were a member of that brass yeah. quintet. And the name of the quintet is? Mike's Brass. And it wasn't originally. It was, um, it, we were just the brass quintet. We never really had a name. Um, and after he went missing, I felt really strongly that I wanted to change the name. Um, so it's named in honor of him. We, we live on through our art and our creative spirit. And, and I, I like paying honor to him in that way. So let's talk about you for a second. So you are a choreographer. Yes. My friend Tim, who is a writer, um, at the end of one Fringe Festival said, you know what you ought to do next year? You ought to take writers and create a dance show where the writers have to dance. John Heimbach wanted to do a piece dedicated to his father who had died, and so I made a, a piece that was um, exploring that generational dynamic of the lessons that we pass on hands down the piece everybody loved. Oh, it was, it had, well, and it had that, that emotional connection to so, that compelling emotional truth. It really was a special piece. Um, and, and that was the one that inspired me. To <laughs> <laughs> what if there was a piece that um, was a tribute to, to my father, the story of um, my dad, your idea was the one I kept coming back to that I found myself really fascinated by. My style of dance, um, which is more jazz, jazz modern, um, Broadway, you know, more in that wheelhouse, with a brass quintet is an interesting juxtaposition mm -hmm. of style and tone. There's really something so powerful there to offer to audiences which is the way that all of us live with ambiguity. Yeah, that's why I love that we're also using the framing device of the poem, mm -hmm. uh, the poem High Flight, as I slip the surly bonds of earth and touch the face of God. This idea that, that the human spirit is something that can just go and be and, and... Well, as far as you know, he never landed. Yeah. And there is a beautiful poetry to the idea that he just kept flying. So let's talk about money. Okay. I don't think it's any shock to anyone that creating art is not cheap. There are, there are producer fees, mm -hmm. uh, rehearsal space, uh, printing costs. There's costs that we want to have, which is paying the artists. We have musicians, we have dancers, we have actors because we are we do have a spoken word element to the, well, the fabric that we're weaving. And this is your father's quintet. And this is a way to invest further in the quintet and invest further in his legacy and yeah. taking it forward, which I think would be beautiful. Yeah.